Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Last time we left off, after what was a pretty difficult guerrilla ops to counter the signal jamming dark event, we also had our first encounter with advanced advent troopers, but we were able to successfully defeat them and recruit another scientist in the process. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I quickly want to take you back to a scene from the last one, specifically this one here. Both of these troopers were actually not killed by Mox's grenade, but by the vehicle explosion, and that should have unlocked the car wrecked achievement, which I forgot to put up. So here it is now, retroactively completed, and with that we are one step closer to full completion. Now also at the end of the last episode I asked you about your thoughts on what to buy or sell at the black market, and quite a few of you told me to get rid of a few stun lancer corpses, so that's what we'll do here. At most we still need four for the rest of the entire game, so just to be on the safe side we'll keep those. Since the market is very interested though, the rest of them will be sold, earning us 42 extra supplies. Now, on the buying side of things, a lot of you were in favor of rushing plated armor, and while I think that that is an excellent idea, I would actually like to wait until our current research project is completed, simply because plated armor is currently the only non-autopsy research project we still have, and while I don't have any data on this, I do feel like these types of research projects have a much higher chance of becoming inspired, so maybe that happens, and in that case we don't need to grab the rush bonus too. Avenger plotting new course. So instead, let's complete another rumor and grab ourselves another scientist, and of course, as all characters in this series, this one also submitted by a Patreon supporter in the naming rights tier and above. This one here goes by the name of Alexander Hopp, and he was submitted by the Patreon supporter of the same name. His biography reads as follows, born in Poland, he spent his youth in Switzerland. Mostly well known for a bad sense of humor, and smoking on the job, even when handling explosives. So, well, perhaps not exactly an ideal fit for our science department, but I'm sure he will find some way to contribute. Moving on then, we have a few options, we still have a supply drop as well as an intel drop, however, we are also in the last days of a 50% scan time reduction that we unlocked in episode 12, and I think we get the most out of that if we actually start making contact with East Africa now, as the 50% reduction here could save us up to 8 scanning days, while the supply drop and the intel cache have much shorter scanning times, and therefore this percentage based reduction is not as much of a time saver. Commander, we've utilized all of our available communications capacity. We can't establish any new contacts until we upgrade our systems. By the way, the reason for going with East Africa instead of West Asia, where we also have an Advent facility, is rather straightforward. Our home base is in West Africa, so this helps us work towards the African continent bonus. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. Right, and it looks like the Avatar project is ticking along, but we are already in the process of doing something about that. We have made a number of new discoveries, Commander. And so there we go, the Gauss Weapons Research Project has been completed, which means we can now grab Tier 2 weapons for the Reaper, Sharpshooter and Grenadier as well. At the moment, we might not actually have the resources to grab all three of them, but we won't buy any of them at this point anyway. First, we'll wait until the next mission pops up, and then we make purchases according to the roster that we end up taking into the field. And there we go, we did get lucky with the inspiration for plated armor. Again, I'm not exactly sure why, but I kind of expected this to happen. Either way, this will now save us some precious intel and of course time. And speaking of time, in the last episode we also recovered enough sectoid corpses so that the autopsy is now instant. And since instant autopsies do not remove research inspirations, let's take care of this one first. Though I was never witness to one myself, countless observers attest to the existence of a much smaller, less intimidating variant of the sectoid that took part in the original invasion. In the time since, this new being, the product of clear genetic manipulation, is now a familiar face to our forces operating in the field. The sectoid's rapid physical evolution over the past 20 years is a testament to both the alien's mastery of genetic engineering and their pursuit of advancement regardless of the risks. Alright, so this is arguably one of the most important autopsies you can perform in the game. Not necessarily because of the anti-psionic mind shield that we already know from the first game, but much more so because it unlocks psionics itself, which, as you maybe also know from our first series, can be extremely powerful. 
They are handled a little differently in this game compared to Enemy Unknown, but the base path is the same, we still need to construct a Psylab to give our soldiers psionic abilities, and there is an argument to be made to get to that soon. However, for the time being, I think it would be stupid to pass up the inspiration here, so for the next 17 days, our research staff will be unlocking the secrets of plated armor. The science is eager to begin, Commander. Alright, and with that, let's keep scanning. We have only three more days until contact with East Africa is established. Commander, the aliens aren't slowing down. They've already got multiple facilities operating across the globe. We're running out of time. Okay, looks like another alien facility has been constructed, this time in the new Arctic region in Asia. So the Avatar project bar is certainly getting a little bit concerning at the moment, but I still think we should be fine at least for now. By the way, quick pause in the action here, you may have also noticed that the scanning times for the supply drop in the intel cache have been increased. That is because that 50% scan time reduction that we grabbed back in episode 12 only lasted for 4 weeks, and unfortunately those 4 weeks have now passed. Alright, and with that it looks like it's time for today's mission. We have an advent retaliation to take care of. One of our resistance havens is under assault, so let's help out. You should have known I'd be coming for your friends eventually. Now, interestingly enough, this will actually be our first encounter with a Haven Assault type mission. Previously, we only had to deal with regular retaliation missions. These ones are slightly different. You'll see why in just a second. Setting course for Western Europe. So, this is our squad for today. Unless I am mistaken, the Hunter is guaranteed to show up on this one. So, we are bringing a good amount of melee damage with Mox and Warhog. Not to mention that as a skirmisher, Mox also deals extra damage against the Hunter. We are also not bringing a sharpshooter into this one. Retaliation missions usually favor a more fast-paced approach. So, I opted for Reaper Dragonova instead, who will also give us a bit of scouting. That also means that at least for now it is enough to grab the mag cannon for our grenadier as well as the Timnotic rifle for Dragonova, and even if we wanted to, the sharpshooter Gauss rifle is sadly not within our budget at the moment. So just checking real quick and we can see the scope here has been transferred onto Twitchy's mag cannon. We could slap on a second upgrade too, but we don't have too many useful ones at the moment, and I would actually like to use the ones we have on others, such as Reaper Dragonova here who can now attach a scope to increase her aim to go along with her two free reloads permission. I would say that's it though, so let's get going. The difficult mission rating in the top left corner is already a good indicator of what to expect, so I have a feeling that the challenges we faced last time are only going to repeat themselves. Sky Squad green to deploy. We're picking up an intermittent distress signal, and as far as we can tell, the aliens are hitting back against one of the resistance outposts. It doesn't look good. We're moving in to secure the area as quickly as possible. Neutralize all enemy contacts. One of those chosen is leading an assault on the resistance encampment in this area. Our people are doing what they can to fight back, but we need to help protect the civilians trapped nearby. There's a group of resistance soldiers hunkered down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. And yes indeed, this is the difference between a regular retaliation mission and a haven assault. We have ourselves some allies in the form of resistance soldiers. However, we cannot control them and they are very poorly equipped. Still, they should make life a little bit easier for us, even if it's just by attracting enemy attention. Our overall goal for the mission meanwhile remains the same. We need to rescue six civilians and neutralize all enemies. And the resistance soldiers do count towards those civilians. In that regard, this mission type is actually also a little bit more difficult. As you can see, our targets do not have any blue outlines around them that we just need to step into to rescue them. Instead, rescuing them is done in a slightly more indirect way by killing all enemies threatening them, while said enemies will of course have killing civilians as their number one priority. So let's see how this goes. Our first move with Reaper Dragonova does not reveal anything, so let's get a bit closer to our first group of targets. The target is marked. Steer clear of those berserkers. They can't do much from range, but they're lethal up close. Okay, we have met some enemies, and once again there is a new type of alien among them. 
the Muton Berserker that we just detected is currently not visible, but standing right next to the trooper here. And while we already know Berserkers from the first game, in XCOM 2 they are actually not too different from that, unlike many other enemies. Yes, 28 hit points at this stage in the game are definitely no joke, but for example, they are not able to counterattack melee strikes like the regular Muton. And unlike in the first game, they are also no longer able to use the Intimidate ability to cause panic. So in other words, they are just tough melee brutes. But apart from their large health pool, there really isn't anything special to keep in mind about them. Still, no need to alert them to our presence too early, so let's move up here and stay out of enemy sight range. And with the conclusion of our first turn, we will now also see whether or not the Chosen Hunter makes an appearance. So many choices. And yes indeed, as expected, the Hunter is here, so I'd say it's best we keep those strengths and weaknesses in mind. So little time. That's one of the Elders chosen, and it's not gonna make things easy on us. Let's try to take care of it as quickly as possible. Okay, and with the first alien group just activating and not striking anyone just yet, a second one makes an appearance. This one consisting of a sectoid and a regular muton. So on our second turn, we already have a good number of enemies against us. On the bright side though, those resistant soldiers we talked about earlier now actually get a separate turn of their own, during which they will use their regular assault rifles to shoot at our enemies. And while those weapons are certainly not the best and the soldiers are also certainly not the most accurate, they can do a tiny bit of damage here and there, and over the course of a full mission that damage is going to add up, provided of course we keep enough of them alive. However, with 4 enemies and a combined 57 hit points still in the vicinity, that might be a bit hard to do, especially since enemies in these types of missions usually go after civilians and resistance soldiers first. Of course, we might be able to use that to our advantage, as any attack going against a civilian is an attack that we don't suffer. Still, it is best if we don't let our enemies go completely wild. So let's start things off with a slash attack against the trooper here. Thanks to Shadow Strike, we actually have a decent crit chance. Okay, no crit and only minimal damage, things are certainly not off to a great start, but at least we did not discover any further enemies. I go where I'm I in. know where you are. Reaper Dragonova can now quickly take care of the sectoid with remote start, arguably the least dangerous enemy on the map at the moment, but still a chance like this is just too good to pass up. For the trooper then, we will first move and then eventually grapple with Mox. That gets him onto the high ground and behind cover and also secures a guaranteed kill. Legen wir endlich los. Against the Berserker, meanwhile, we are now using one of my favorite toys early. The Frost Bomb here ensures that it won't be able to attack anyone because we'll very likely end up with the Muton doing that already, but perhaps Twitchy's suppression here results either in a lucky miss or in a reaction shot for us. There we go, the Muton moves, however, the reaction fire goes wide, and at this point it is likely time to say goodbye to our first civilian. Commander, Advent isn't backing off. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces just to get a better shot at the civilians. Take those bastards down. This is just too easy. Oh, thought you could hide, eh? Right, so we have sadly lost our first civilian, likely not the last though. Thankfully though, at least the hunter is generous at the moment with only the tracking shot mark. The resistance meanwhile puts some fire down on the muton, not really the ideal choice here in my opinion because of its armor. And so, even though we do get a hit here, the muton only loses one hit point. I relish these quiet moments before the strike. Right, so at this point we are only left with the Muton and the Berserker, which is still a tough task at this point in the game. As you saw, our enemy's priority is clearly killing civilians, so we are not necessarily putting our squad at a huge risk by leaving any one of them alive. We are, however, endangering the entire mission, which is of course not ideal. So let us at least try to kill the Muton here, starting with a shot from Twitchy. Thanks to the fact that we picked Shredder with her, this should also get rid of the armor. 
Okay, armor destroyed, critical hit, and still not enough for the kill. That is a bit unfortunate, because it means that we now need to focus the actions of one additional soldier on the muton. Mox, however, is in a perfect position to double tap the Berserker. His ability to fire twice if he doesn't move already results in 12 lovely points of damage. That's a great start, but still leaves the Berserker with 16 hit points. And since it is doubtful that we'll be able to kill it with that much health left, let us instead at least secure the kill of the Muton. If Dragonova reveals herself in the process, that would not be a huge problem at this stage of the mission. Remember, they are not worrying about them. The Elders have plenty more to spare. Right, so at least our Reaper is still concealed, and if things go really well here, then we do in fact manage to pull off max damage with both Van Dyke and Warhawk. That would be 16 points of damage, enough to get the kill. And since we're not going to move with our Specialist, we might as well give 8 protocol to Mox. In just a second, he will be the soldier closest to the Hunter, so the extra defense bonus might come in handy. With the second half of Van Dyke's turn, then we take aim and simply hope for the best. Right, only 6 points of damage and that means that there is now only one way to guarantee the kill here, and that would be to use Warhawk's free axe throw before shooting. However, I also feel like we are burning through our special toys a bit too quickly here. Keep in mind that we still have 2 or 3 enemy groups left, not to mention the hunter, so instead we're saving the axe throw and just take a shot here. Maybe we get lucky with a critical, otherwise another civilian is likely going to die. And again, only minimum damage, so there goes civilian number two. The hunter at least continues with his tracking shot, so for the moment no concerns there. Not far enough. And now the resistance gets to act, and if we're lucky, we might actually witness them killing the berserker for us. Resistance team is in the clear. They're moving to help the other survivors. Right then, the Berserker is down, no need for us to waste any more actions on it. I am not quite sure how XP are handled in this case though, but considering the overall stakes, that is very much a secondary concern. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. Right, and with that, this first group is now actually also considered rescued, which means we are now at 2 out of 6. The remaining 4 will need to be acquired in and around this building here, which is very likely going to be swarming with enemies, not to mention the hunter, in just a few turns. At the moment, it also looks like there are plenty of civilians to rescue, but you saw how quickly their numbers can dwindle if enemies are left alive, and well, I'm afraid that we still have quite a few of those left. So we better hurry, and thanks to stealth mode, Dragonova can move up safely. And since that does not reveal anything, the rest of the squad is free to go too. However, we are in need of a few reloads, and I'd like to have at least one or two guys on Overwatch, so it is not the most aggressive push we are going for. New skirmishes seem to have a lot in common with the mutants. Short on brains, big on brawn. Let's get this done. I will always find you. And here's the hunter, at least in sight range of Dragonova now. Good thing though that she's still hidden, which immediately causes them to retreat a bit. And since we have not discovered any further enemy parts, the aliens also do not take any actions, which means we are moving straight over to the resistance turn and it looks like we are looking at one particularly brave individual here. However, instead of taking a shot against the hunter, they just drop down and then take a shot all the way through the building against, yes, another berserker. And as if that wasn't bad enough already, the next resistance action here reveals yet another one. While the first one behind the building is actually taking quite a bit of punishment already, three resistance soldiers have already targeted it and all three have landed their shots, so again those are the ways in which these types of missions can be a tiny bit easier, although as you can also see here it looks like we need all the help we can get, as there appears to be another enemy group over on this side of the building as well. Enjoy these final breaths. 
Right then, so far no additional civilian casualties, so let's keep moving. The Hunter is of course very close by, and as much as it pains me to say this, they are our primary target. Everyone else will likely go after civilians, and with 15 of them still alive, we have a bit of a buffer. So let's stay out of the Hunter's side range for now and prepare at least half of an Overwatch ambush. Dragonova, meanwhile, can scout ahead just a bit further. Since she is concealed, she won't fire on reaction shots anyway. But with her not detecting anything interesting, let's activate Overwatch and see what happens. I am on watch. Fire shots! It's time to make the Elders proud. Right, and there we go. Enraged by the enemy fire, we now have at least one enemy berserker going mayhem. The rest are still keeping their cool for now. So with the hunter's turn coming up next, let's see if our small ambush here works out. I've got a reputation to maintain, Commander. And I can't just let you from me off like last time. We've got the Chosen in our sights. It's time to take them out. Mm. Smells like my reinforcements are just over the horizon. Right, so we only landed one reaction shot, but Warhawk actually did a fair whack of damage. The Hunter also chose the relatively harmless option of spawning in a trooper. Better hold your ears. Although down the line that might come back to haunt us, as any extra enemy of course means additional actions for the aliens, and in all likelihood those will be used on decimating the civilian population. With a concussion grenade, the Hunter then actually also chooses a rather curious way of going against the civilians. Either way, it saves us from having to mourn another loss this early. And that means we can now once again watch our resistance friends go at it. Since the enemy pods are technically not active yet, they also have a rather easy job finding flanking shots. And so we actually see all resistance attacks this round find their target, and it looks like they should be able to handle at least the trooper and the purifier on their own. I'm watching you. For us, meanwhile, I think it's time to take out the Hunter early, since the rest of the enemies are still nice and passive. So let's move a stealth Dragonova up onto the roof here. An alien scouting party. The time for hiding is over. Doing so then reveals a full pot of aliens, and I have to admit remote start is incredibly tempting here. Still, as much as I'm itching for it, the Hunter is our primary target. So let's actually drop a Claymore right next to them. The trap is set. Which we can then blow up with Twitchy, dealing 8 points of damage in the process, removing the armor and also dealing additional fall damage. There is nowhere to hide. So that's the Hunter already down to 10 hit points. And with a bit of luck, we might actually be able to kill them with our next action here. Repositioning. As we grapple Mox onto the gas station roof here, from where he has a guaranteed hit with a 40% chance to crit. And keeping in mind that because of his skirmisher class, he also deals extra damage against the Hunter, although that is already factored into the damage calculation here. All of that is unfortunately not enough though, and because I don't want to move anyone up much further and risk activating another enemy group, we'll have to do this the old fashioned way. So let's have Ranger Warhawk throw a grenade, carefully making sure not to hit any civilians. Catch! And there we go, chosen defeated, that was actually not too difficult. However, the real fight has arguably only just begun. Now we need to kill aliens faster than they can kill civilians. I'm beginning to understand why the elders find you so interesting, Commander. Your little crew does present a challenge somehow. Great job, Commander. But there's no trace of that Chosen left. I've got a feeling we haven't seen the last of them. Still, at least we ruined their plans today. That we did, but like I said, now things should start to get really interesting, as we want to rescue at least 4 of the remaining 14 civilians. But as we once again use 8 protocol, this time on our ranger here, our turn has now come to an end, and that means those numbers are likely not going to stay that way for long. Right, there goes the first civilian, and following that we now also have the group by the car activating. No place for you to go now. Thankfully though, that means that they won't kill anyone just yet. 
However, it also seems like we do in fact have yet another berserker on the map, so this makes it four in total for the entire mission, with three of them still alive, and if all of them actually go after civilians each turn, that could be bad, simply because their large health pools might just not allow us to kill them fast enough. Still, for now, we have only lost three civilians this turn, and as always, our resistance allies are doing a great job fighting back. As I had hoped and expected, the purifier here is actually killed in the process, and shortly after, the trooper suffers the same fate. And that now brings us back to our turn with a rather straightforward objective. Kill all remaining enemies before they can kill more than seven civilians. That also means that our highest priority is to simply reduce enemy numbers and not necessarily to take out the strongest enemies, which is why we are first focusing on the stun lancer here by blowing up their cover. Throwing grenade! Following that, we then hope for at least 5 points of damage with the axe throw. And after unfortunately only getting four, we are moving up to take the shot. In doing so, we now also officially activate another group of aliens. The berserker here had so far only been active because it had become enraged due to the resistance fire. You cannot run. But in the grand scheme of things, this doesn't change too much. The 80%er then at least finds its target and takes out the stun lancer. There you go. And so we are moving up with Van Dyke next to start chipping away at the berserkers. This once again causes one of them to become enraged, which basically just means that their movement speed increases. Reloading weapon. Considering the amount of unfortunate targets right in front of them though, I doubt we'll be able to notice that. And so Mox follows things up with a shot of his own, removing a further 6 hit points. And finally, Dragonova can stay hidden for just a little while longer by using Remote Start again, which is admittedly completely overkill to get rid of the Purifier here. This will get their attention. Our alien enemies then continue to go to town. I fully expect to lose five more civilians this turn, which would put us at six remaining, of which we would then need to rescue four to complete the mission objective. We do get a bit of a lucky break though, as the trooper here misses his shot, and since that now also brings the alien turn to an end, we are starting the next one with seven civilians still alive. Still, we are very much not in the clear yet, so every little bit of damage counts, so it is definitely good to see that our friends from the resistance continue to find their targets. Starting to get cooked. And that now brings us back to our turn. At the moment, there are five enemies still standing and we have seven civilians left, so that means we need to kill at least two of those aliens to not fail the mission on the next enemy turn. And the fact that even the most injured berserker still has a good amount of health left is not exactly making that any easier. As you can see here, even two shots from Mox are not enough to get the kill, but maybe we get a bit more lucky with Ranger Warhawk going for a slash attack against the trooper. Okay, so I got one. Alright, critical hit and loot recovery all in the same turn, that is just lovely. An autoloader and two combat sims are definitely also a good reward. I got your stuff here! Especially the speed PCS is always great to have for melee units like Rangers or Templars. For the time being though, we need to kill at least one more enemy, and luckily the Berserker here is an easy target. A simple combat protocol from Specialist Van Dyke is enough to get the job done. This also gives Van Dyke the promotion to lieutenant, so that is nice to see. At this point though, I think our options to grab kills are pretty much exhausted. As you can see, Dragonova does have a shot here, but the kill is not guaranteed, and should she get revealed in the process, she would be flanked, so I think it's best if we just loop around and go into a flanking position ourselves. I am trusting you. Grenadier Twitchy, meanwhile, can fire away with an 82%er. It won't be enough for the kill, but it might make things easier on the next turn. And there we go, the enemy turn is up, there are three of them still standing, and that means we can likely expect three more civilian casualties here. 
Surprisingly though, it looks like it is once again the trooper making life a bit easier for us. I'm not quite sure, but the grenade here might have been enough to take out a regular civilian, but the resistance soldiers are a bit tougher than that and therefore both of them survive. And so the resistance turn begins with five of them still alive, four of which we need to rescue. However, even our resistance heroes need to reload at some point, so the damage output of this turn is not as much as it used to be. Still, we have put a few points of extra damage on the Berserkers and the trooper in the back should now also be an easy kill. We could technically even leave one of the three alive and still win the mission, but let us maybe try to avoid that if we can. Soon to be out of ammunition. Or let us accept that XCOM can sometimes be a cruel mistress, as Mox misses a 99%er here. It was only a matter of time and to be honest I'm surprised it took us 16 episodes to get here. Still, compared to the other one, this is the Berserker in a much better position to be shot at, so we are not switching targets to the one with one less hit point. Instead, we hope that Van Dyke can make a 92% account. That he can, unfortunately though only for minimum damage again, but we should still be able to get the kill on this turn if Twitchy manages to soften up both targets with a grenade here, although targeting that for some reason planted an evac zone. Not quite sure what happened there, as you saw I did press the right buttons. Well, let's just say we got lucky it happened this way around, as dropping a grenade on a bunch of soldiers we want to evac sounds less than ideal. Either way, we still have the grenade and surprisingly also no more civilians in the area. So here we go now, getting ready for the big boom. Bombs away! And that also means that one of the berserkers is now a guaranteed kill for our ranger, who can get up nice and close here to guarantee the hit. Very nice, and that leaves Dragonova to deal with the trooper, which from this position should once again be another guaranteed kill. And there we go, our Reaper has been revealed but promoted, five civilians are left and so is one berserker, so the math is working out beautifully here, albeit barely. Also, I had not expected the Berserker to actually go after one of our soldiers, especially not with a resistance soldier standing right next to them outside of the window. On the bright side though, we got extremely lucky with a miss here, otherwise Ranger Warhawk might have been in serious trouble. Our resistance friends meanwhile take this opportunity to pick apart the single target that is left, and if you are paying very close attention during this resistance turn you might also actually notice something. We'll get back to that in just a second, but for now let's unlock the David and Goliath achievement, which we get for killing a berserker in melee combat. And yes, here's what I was talking about earlier. The number of visible civilians on screen did not actually match the number in the top left corner. That was something that I honestly had not noticed until this point. But of course, retaliation missions usually feature faceless, and it looks like we also have one to deal with this time before we can call the mission a success. A useful aid. Luckily though, we still have enough firepower left to hopefully deal with this easily, so we start things off with a grade from Mox here, which will hopefully also apply some fall damage. It will be strong. Vision. Lovely, a grand total of 6 points of damage that is already half the faceless health pool. The other half can now go to Twitchy, provided she can land the 81%er. And she cannot, looks like today is not our best mission targeting wise, so at this point we actually have no other option but to play it extremely safe, and that means going in with a second combat protocol, so that Dragonova is guaranteed to deal enough damage for the kill. We can also reconceal her just to get a tiny bit closer, although considering the scope we attached at the beginning of the mission, that might not have been necessary. Your friends will Status 1-5, you've secured the remaining civilians and there are no other hostile contacts on the scope. Good work out there. And there we are, the mission is complete, we have once again defeated the hunter, although we were very much teetering on the edge there. 
The flawless mission rating then was also far from guaranteed. All in all though, I think today was a good showcase of how good and bad luck are sometimes very closely related in this game. If anything, I fear we are making it easier for them to catalog our people. The speaker commended loyal citizens today for standing up to those who would abandon our values for those of the old world. The remarks followed a moment of silence for peacekeepers slain by XCOM dissidents. The elders would have us believe that the Chosen are beyond our reach. Immortal children to immortal gods. Both will fall. Right, so we have promotions to take care of with Van Dyke and Dragonova, and let's start with our specialist. At the lieutenant rank, we can choose between field medic, giving him extra med kits if he has at least one equipped, or scanning protocol, which is basically the battle scanner from the first game, only as an ability, able to reveal enemies in the fog of war and even hidden enemies. And well, considering it's on the combat hacker side, you might think that that's the one we're going with. However, we are instead choosing field medic. At the moment, it might not look like it synergizes well, but we will soon have the ability to bring extra items into combat, and being able to increase our number of medkits without actually having to bring more might be useful, even for a combat hacker specialist. Also, scanning protocol does largely the same as the battle scanner, which is still available in this game, and which we can then also bring more easily thanks to those extra item slots. Moving on then, we have our Reaper, this time with four skills to choose from, including a randomized XCOM skill. Although I think it's safe to say that squad side here is really not going to be all that useful for a class that often is at or near the front lines. All in all, Dragonova usually has no trouble targeting any enemy she pleases. Needle then sounds interesting, giving all shots from shadow mode, plus two armor piercing. However, armor piercing is not the same as armor shredding, and we do have shredder available to us as well, which I would like to think is the better ability in this case, simply because it doesn't just ignore the armor for our reaper, but removes it for everyone. This then brings us to distraction, resulting in kills with the claymore putting our reaper back into shadow mode. However, ideally we don't even break shadow mode that often for this one to come into play, so even if it does, it feels highly situational. And that now brings us to Silent Killer, which is the one we're going with. However, I also have to say that it is completely understandable if you think that Silent Killer is not all that great. Unfortunately, the way it is described here and the way that the breaking stealth chance meter at the top of the screen during missions is displayed, those are both a bit misleading. Because unlike what is shown on screen, the first shot taken from shadow mode will never break it, the 50% chance to do so actually applies to the second shot. And with Silent Killer here not increasing the Reaper's chance to break stealth as long as the shots are killing, that means we can basically ensure that Dragonova stays hidden permanently as long as she only picks off low health enemies. And in order to nudge that health threshold a bit more in our favor, we are now also spending some extra AP to pick up Blood Trail, so that if the target has already taken damage, Dragonova deals one extra point of damage against it. As you can imagine, that synergizes very well with an approach that relies on getting the last shot. And here we are then, our reward for this mission, 7 rescued civilians, the loot that Warhawk grabbed as well as a bunch of corpses, including our first Muton Berserker corpses, which now unlocks the Berserker Autopsy. As you can imagine though, we will not take care of that right away, even though it unlocks a pretty cool item. You and your crew have dealt another serious blow to the aliens' efforts today, Commander. Impressive work. Impressive indeed, and honestly a bit unexpected considering how the mission was going at times. Still, our monthly income has been increased by 21 supplies, and actually I would like to keep going for just a little while longer here. Not only should we finish making contact with East Africa in two days, but our covert action to find the assassin stronghold is also almost complete. Commander, we've got local resistance forces waiting to make contact but we'll have to make the first move. And of course, we are also reminded here of the supply drop that we still need to grab. I take no satisfaction in battle with those who do not know it and would not seek it. But I am beholden to my master's will, and they would silence all questions. Right, chosen retribution, the assassin has just decreased the region income in West Asia by 17 supplies, which more or less negates the bonus we just earned ourselves in the last mission. The Elders never had any issues targeting civilians, and their Chosen are no different. The Resistance is counting on us to protect their people. We can't let them down. 
And we have also picked up another rumor, this time for Intel, and it might be interesting to go after that. However, for the time being, let us first finish making contact with East Africa. Setting course for Sector 12, East Africa. Advent isn't exactly known for being quiet, so I'd love to find out how they pulled off this ambush. Right, so it appears that our covert action has unfortunately concluded in an ambush, and we can't actually do anything else at this point but to start that mission, so let's do exactly that. Did you honestly expect to operate in the shadows while I still move among the living? Right then, time for another extraction mission. We only have three people with us on this one, and the Lost are apparently also present, so this is going to be a fun one, and let's at least take a look at what we're dealing with before we make the cut for today. You've got no time to waste. Break cover and move to the extraction point on the double. Right, so the map here actually looks somewhat familiar, and just as a refresher, we have with us Specialist Trominian, Sharpshooter Sapphire West and Ranger Starfall Antac. All three of them are among our highest ranking soldiers, so let's hope that we can get them out of here alive, and ideally without major injuries. All of that will have to happen in the next episode though, because for today I think we have been going on for long enough, so let's make the cut right here, and as always I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.